I want you to meet 29-year-old Nolan Arbaugh. He is the first human trial subject for Elon Musk's Neuralink brain computer interface. Now, Nolan, who hasn't always been in a wheelchair, faced life challenging events after he went to do a little swimming on his day off from being a camp counselor. Um, I was at a man-made lake and if you imagine running into the ocean and you get to about waist deep water and the waves are coming in, then you kind of like dive under, you know, a wave. That's all I did in the lake. It's not like I was jumping off any cliffs. I wasn't jumping high. I didn't like dive headfirst in anything. I just ran in the water with a couple of guys and we all kind of dove in like that. I think I got hit in the side of the head by one of the guys that was with me because I definitely didn't hit the bottom. The side of my head was sore for a few weeks, so I knew I got hit in the side of my head. Nolan stopped by our studios to share with us how he decided to trust Elon Musk and apply to be Neuralink's first test subject. I didn't know anything about Neuralink um, when I applied. Uh, one of my buddies from college, he worked in um, the spinal cord field after college. He worked in a spinal cord lab, and he followed the Elon Musk sphere quite a bit. So he was just randomly Googling something about SpaceX, I think. <laughs> and it had shown up that day that Neuralink had opened up the human trials. And so he texted me and said, hey, do you want to get a chip in your brain? And kind of <laughs> jokingly, I was like, yeah, I'm like, might as well. And so he called me on the phone and kind of gave me a five minute rundown of what Neuralink was about, what they were doing, what they were planning. And I said, sure, like I'll sign up. Uh, I'll apply for it. So I joked around on my application. I told them I wanted an Iron Man suit. <laughs> like I just, you know, funny things. And um, then I heard back from them in like a day or two. And Did you really? A, yeah. It was just kind of a whirlwind. Um, I think what, three, four months after I applied, I was getting surgery. Now, was it a long surgery? No, I, from what I understand, it was supposed to be between three and six hours long, but everything went so perfectly, it was under two. Wow. It was really quick. Can you believe that? It only took two hours to give Nolan a huge part of his life back. Now, in that time, Neuralink's surgical robot inserts tiny, tiny threads into the motor cortex. Now, that's the part of the brain that controls movement. The procedure just took like 20 to 40 minutes. Each thread has 16 recording sites totaling 1,024 electrodes. These electrodes capture brain activity and send signals via Bluetooth. Wow, sounds like a sci-fi movie, right? And definitely a little scary. There were some pros and cons. Uh, I was excited. I mean, it's cool to be the first of anything. Um, I think that drove me a little bit, at least. I was a little worried that maybe it wouldn't work. There would be some downsides to it because, you know, the first of anything, you never right, know you if it's going to work. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, but I always knew that I wanted to be the first to test all of that out. I knew that if anyone was going to go through it, if anyone was going to experience the downsides of it, then I wanted to do that and take that on as much as possible to help people after me. Um, so being the first was, it was cool. I mean, it's exciting. I asked Nolan, what's the biggest thing that you're able to do right now with the BCI? His answer was just absolutely amazing. Nolan now has the ability to be in charge of his own life with full access. He can reply to emails. He can text. He can even schedule all his interviews right on his own calendar, all just by thinking about it. Wow. What I keep telling people is it's something as simple as sending a text message. I just sent a text even uh, the other day from my old computer while my Neuralink was charging and one of my friends was <laughs> in the room and it took me about 10, 15 minutes to send the text. Constant like, you know, like you were talking about Siri, sometimes understanding what you're trying to say. Right. It just doesn't work. And so it would take me so long to even reply to one person. Now imagine trying to keep in touch with all of my friends, all of my family all the time. It's just not feasible. So now I can send a text in a couple seconds. It's super easy. So, so tell us, how do, you, how, would, how do you send a text now? So I do it through the computer. I do it through the app. I have cursor control right now. Um, that's just the first part of the study. So soon it'll be things like texting and different ways for the implant to understand what I'm trying to tell it, you know, different words maybe. Um, so right now I have a virtual keyboard that I control with uh, my cursor and I have a dictation that Neuralink built specifically for me. But it's not all work for Nolan and his Neuralink. This device has given him back his life as a regular 29 year old guy who likes to hang out and play video games. I want you to notice how Nolan drives in the first clip compared to the second. Wow, I mean, even in the beginning, what he was able to do with that game, <laughs> crazy, right? And to think, in just a few weeks of practice, and that's where his skill level is? 
Okay, Neuralink is really, really something. But there are some concerns that have been voiced about Neuralink and its ability to work with AI. But let's hear Nolan's perspective. With the Neuralink, he wants to someday, and this is where it gets controversial, is that to blend it with human consciousness yeah. and AI, yeah. and, which I could totally see that happening. Yeah. I mean, I can, can't you? Yeah, I can see it happening. I'm excited for that time. I know a lot of people have a lot of concerns, ethical concerns, things about that. My immediate focus is helping handicapped people. They're like, for me, just specifically, it's changed my life so much. It's made me more independent. It's um, helped me feel like I have a purpose and that I'm able to accomplish a lot more that I wasn't able to accomplish before. Yeah, I'm sure it's great for your psyche and oh, your yeah. uh, mental health and your mm. emotional well-being that you're able to do some things. Yeah. Have you made direct requests of them saying, okay, mm. what if it did this? Could it do this? Yeah, all the time. They're constantly asking my feedback. What would I like to do? Are there things that I can't do now that I wish I could do? Things like different games that I wish I could play and what the gap is. Um, for them what they need to do in order to get me there. So I'm constantly telling them things that I would like to do. I mean, I want to like write a book at some point. I, I was going to ask you if you wanted to do that. Yeah, I do. I, yeah. I've i always been into, you know, fiction and fantasy. So that was kind of my lane. But with all this going on, oh. I might as well. It's a hundred percent. You're just, yeah. I mean, because you know, you're living it. Yeah, exactly. So um, I hope to do that at some point. And we're working with things like sign language fingerspelling right now in, uh, in order to get, you know, the typing to work. At the beginning of my um, journey, like I said, I was doing a lot of attempted movement. The day it clicked that I didn't need to attempt and I could just think things and make it happen, the world opened up to me. Well, I mean, look at everything that it's done in the last five months. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's... It's and wild. as soon as they get more participants in, then the growth is going to be exponential. Neuralink reported that they have successfully implanted another BCI into a second patient's brain as of August 2024, as they continue the research into what this implant is really, truly capable of. I'm Kim Commando. Thanks for being here. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And just go ahead, sign up for my free newsletter right here, right here. That's what you need to do. Just sign up for my free newsletter. And uh, again, thanks for watching.